So we're going to make uh, the recipe I never thought I would share. This is my shepherd's pie recipe, which took months and months for me to get right. But here we go. We're going to share it. So we'll go through the ingredients. First. I'm going to put all the ingredient measurements in the thing below. So we've got grated onion, grated carrot, some gravy, brown and gravy powder, whole grain mustard, tomato puree, a tin of tomatoes, some olive oil, the imperence Worcester sauce. These are bouquet garni. These are dried. I'd normally use fresh, but we don't have, couldn't find fresh yesterday. Potatoes for the top of the for the mash. There is some cheese and butter, uh, but that's in the fridge, so we need it. And some beef stock. It's good strong red wine. Good port, and then this is half beef, half uh, lamb mince. So we'll start off now. Now, because we're in the makeshift kitchen, because we don't have a kitchen, um, we have this little machine here. So I'm going to put a little, little olive oil in there. And first things first is we're going to fry off the onions and the carrots. So this is just to protect the nice wallpaper. This one's for using the mixture kitchen. So these are going to fry off until they soften up and brown because they're grated. It's not going to take a, a huge amount of time. I'm going to have a look like in there. And we're just going to soften and brown those as this gets hot. So you want your um, carrots and onions to start looking like this. And what I forgot to mention is we also have some very finely chopped mushrooms. So they're going to go in now. This is all just going to soften up. You already it smells so good. It does. <laughs> it's just carrot and onion. Well, you just like onions. Well, I always say this to you at the same time. The veg. Or garlic. Yeah, garlic, <laughs> garlic carrot, and onions. onions. So that's just going to sweat down a little bit more with the others. I'm just going to add some flavour. So you really you want this quite small because you want it to really dissolve because um, we're going to slow cook this. So these just become part of the part of the sauce. Okay. So whilst we're on with the mushrooms and carrots and everything, they're just slowly softening down there. Normally when I'd have a whole hob, this would be a bit hot and then... I don't know whether you need to brown the mushrooms up or not in here, but... They're sweating down and they're just becoming yummy and yummy. I'm going to start with a kiss because this is a really important point. So I put a little bit of greaseproof paper in the bottom there. I douse the potatoes in a good amount of olive oil and salt. Salt some So quite a good amount because you're going to get two recipes out of these potatoes. You get the potatoes because we're going to scoop the middles out for the mash and then. The skins are left, the next day you can put cheese, bacon, you can do sour cream dip, you can do guacamole dip, you can do whatever you want. But you just put them back in the oven the next day and they crisp up and they're absolutely gorgeous. So lots and lots and lots of salt. And lots and lots. And these are going to go in the oven for about two to three hours on quite a low light. For whatever yours is. And they're just going to come nutty and buttery at the inside and the skin's going to be crisp and it's just you see you've got these two fabulous things from them and you're using the whole whole potato you got me yeah okay so we've taken out the bouquet gardens and i've sprinkled in a little bit of the gravy granules and it's just till it gets to kind of thick there's still quite a lot of liquid in here so it gets to like a thick Consistency like that with the gravy granules. And then I'm going to leave this most of the day, like in a slow cooker situation, but with the lid off so it thickens. Because the end result is we're going to want it to look something kind of about that amount of liquid. This is too liquidy. So I'm going to let the liquid keep slowly cooking off. So we're going to make a red wine jus to go with the sauce. Got half an onion in there for the rest of this. Of the I think we're going to have to put some red wine in as well. Just get some red wine. 
Just get that nicely boiling and that little bit of to have like a sticky syrup. Then we're going to add in some beef stock. So I'm just going to switch this off a second so you can see. Just have to go sticky and gloopy. That still needs a little bit longer, it's almost there. And that will just make a nice red wine as you have a little taste. Mm. Quite bitter, but it, with the whole thing, it goes, goes very well. This is boiled down now and thickened up, so I'm going to leave this. I would normally now put this in the CV because this is a slow cook, I'm going to leave this without the top on for four hours. Um, and just let it just get gorgeous. Three. Okay, so we've got to about this texture. And um, we've slow cooked it so that just lets all the meat reabsorb. When it's boiling, it's tightening the meat and it's all the flavors going. So all the juices are back into the meat. And I would normally do this eight to 10 hours in a sous vide bag, which is the vacuum bag, so you can Google that. But because this has a slow cooker, we just did it for an extra couple of hours on the slow cooker function. So it's like that. And then we're going to serve individual portions. So I'll whittle off so they're not too wet. And that will get topped with a mashed potato. So the potatoes have cooked, as you can see here, and I've halved some already. So you leave them to cool a little bit. Now I normally use a potato rice at home, but they don't tend to do those in France. They do these machines. You just scrape out as much as that. Remember to keep your skins. These are still quite hot. I guess this is like the rice. Yeah, just like the rice. So that's what we're going to do with all the potato. Yep. So we've got the mash now, and we've put some whole grain mustard, some cheese, and some butter. I just like to keep it nice and light. It's going to fill the top of our little lambkins. Press it up with the fork, so not so nice little bits to go crispy and brown.